Download, subscribe, and listen to Whiskey Hill Podcast. We're the new show that doesn't hold back on today's ridiculousness. We're not on the right and we're not on the left. We call it the way we see it and we're going to make you laugh while doing it. Throw in some great craft beer and you cannot lose. Download Whiskey Hell Podcast anywhere you enjoy listening and check out whiskeyhellpod.com for more. Welcome to the League of Kings Podcast. Meet your hosts, Willie, J. Dot, Big Brother, and Joe. Join these four distinct voices in insightful discussions about society and culture. Get ready for captivating content, camaraderie, and guarantee laughter. Sit back, enjoy the show, and remember to like, share, and subscribe for an exciting journey ahead. Also check out A Dead Letter Podcast. A Dead Letter is a paranormal podcast hosted by the immortal who explores the unexplained phenomena that hunt our world. Check out my buddy's podcast. And now let's get on with the show. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the show. Welcome to Bull Talk by Joe podcast. Hopefully everybody's doing great. It's been a while since my last episode. It's been over a week, and I want to apologize to all my listeners. I've been super swamped, traveling for work, family life, work life, Christmas, Christmas presents, Christmas preparations. Uh, it's just been wild, right? It's, the, it's this, you know, December, end of the year. You know, it's just really, really busy. I've tried to record on the road, and uh, it didn't work out. I recorded a few episodes and it was just lots of noise, background noise, lots of distractions. The, the topics weren't good at all. Uh, it was it was horrible. So usually I drop every Monday and now I'm going to drop on the weekends. So Saturday or Sunday is when my episode is going to be dropping. That way I can have enough time from Monday to Friday to gather all my notes and all my content and be able to record something. Uh, usually would have a bunch of episodes recorded, pre-recorded, but I ran out of them. And I do that for this kind of situation. So when I'm really, really busy, um, I can have stuff ready to roll. But I don't. So I don't have anything to roll with. So I have to, this is, uh, this episode is going to be dropping this, uh, this weekend. And, uh, you know, I'm I'm trying to do my best to, to get out of this, uh, to get out of this jam. Right. And, uh, again, I want to apologize to all, to all the listeners that have been waiting for my show. I've been getting messages like, Hey, what happened to the show? We're still doing the show, you know, and it's like, we're still going on with the show. Just, I am in something right now called the podcasters block. I made that up. That's not real. Uh, you, I'm sure everybody's heard of writer's block, right? That's when you just, you're stuck. You can't seem to come up with any ideas or write anything. You're just stuck, right? And uh, that's my new thing. Now it's uh, I have this podcaster's block, and I have no idea what to talk about. I've I, I need to regain traction. Um, I was doing pretty good, and then all of a sudden it was derailed a little bit, and now I'm I'm completely lost on what I'm supposed to be doing. I have a lot of stuff that I that I uh, that I am involved with, and I just can't seem to get anything done. Right? I'm also a host of a different podcast called the League of Kings podcast. Shout out to the League of Kings, my brother Willie, my brother Big Brother, <laughs> my brother Big Brother, and my brother J Dot, right? And they're also hosts of the League of Kings podcast. That show is doing great. Uh, that's an amazing show, society and culture show. Uh, it's great. Check, check us out. And, uh, you know, since I'm already on the shout out train, shout out to Willie and Fiona for the Thing About Us podcast. Will, of course, is one of the hosts of the league. Shout out to uh, J Dot from the What Is TWS podcast. Shout out to Big Brother from the Big Brother Advice podcast. Shout out to Frank from a Dead Letter podcast. And, uh, you know, Frank's not a host of the League of Kings, but uh, he has his own show. It's a paranormal show, it's a great show. But back to what I was saying is I don't know what the hell I was saying. See? podcasters block podcasters block so yeah so i'm 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 having an issue right now trying to come out with content trying to come out with ideas again i have a lot of stuff going on a gaming channel and i was trying to build another podcast and 
and now I feel like I'm overwhelmed a little bit, right? Like I have no balance. And and this just this started uh, not too long ago. So uh, there was a, a few things that happened that got me derailed, and now I'm trying to, like I said, trying to come back and, and figure something out. So I have nothing. I have nothing. I've honestly I've been sitting in front of this microphone for about three hours, and I started and restarted the same you know this episode about 50 times i'm not gonna i'm not gonna lie to you and i have nothing to talk about nothing absolutely nothing i wanted to talk about politics but i feel like i kind of i don't know what the hell's going on with politics you know i know that um vivek raman swami whatever the hell his name is uh, i feel um at first i didn't like him but now I, I like him a bit. But the problem is that he reminds me of a younger Donald Trump, but more educated, right? Because uh, Vivek is really educated. And Donald Trump was, you know, for being as rich as he is, he does he's not as educated as I thought he was. Speak, you know, talking about the way he talks. And, you know, Vivek obviously is, uh, has, is really good with his words. You know, Sada puts his words and uh, he's going after everybody for the Republican side, right? And um, calling everybody out. So that's what Donald Trump did at first when he started to run, right? An outsider. And uh, it worked out for him, but I think, uh, you know, I don't think it's going to work out this time, even though some of the stuff that he's saying is true. And uh, I think he's going to have to switch his, uh, switch his, uh, the way he's, his approach uh, a little bit later on, right, and and stop with that because that's exactly what Trump did, and uh, we need somebody a little bit different, right? I like that he's thirty eight years old, different generation, has different views, fresh views, uh, young, right, not a hundred years old, and they can't walk or do anything or they can't think for themselves. This guy uh, is definitely uh, gonna do good things, right? But I'm still leaning for RFK. I wouldn't be opposed to Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and uh, Vivek as a vice president. I don't know how that would even work. I don't even know how that shit works. I'm just talking. But uh, that would be great, right? I think they're both want good for the country. But I don't know. That's what I got about politics. Um, I've been, I have been looking at the Republican debates, uh, this, this shit that goes on, right, on TV. I don't look at the Democrat stuff. That Those people are, I, I just... It's not about the Democrats. It's about the people that are running. You know, it, it's there. There's nothing that I like about them. And I like RFK. And I, and now I'm I'm kind of I like Vivek. I, I think he's okay. I don't think he's gonna win. I mean, even though you go on social media and there's a uh, a lot of good stuff. I mean, most of his posts, even when they get reposted by somebody else, there's like eighty percent of the of the um people talking right of the messages uh they're good right people are supporting this guy big time so that's good that's a lot of people supporting uh rfk also which is really good and i like i like them you know i like them they're outsiders they're not politicians and everybody else is a politician and and that's the point is i don't i don't want to vote for a politician again I, I don't and and yes donald trump was not a politician but damn he was he was a handful uh, but I think uh, either one of these guys would do a good job. I think the RFK would do a better job. Um, it was just, uh, it's going to be hard, right? It's going to be hard. There's a lot of stuff that needs to be repaired, fixed in this country. And uh, we need to get the American people back together. We need to figure out something with the border, right? Everybody's coming over. There's a lot of stuff going on. Um, I did catch the Tucker Carlson and, uh, and Alex Jones interview. That was very interesting. Alex Jones was completely different. It was a different person. Was not uh, maybe they told him, "Hey, you need to relax and not get so wild," but he behaved himself. He um, had a really good conversation with Tucker Carlson, and a lot of the stuff that he was saying was, you know, dead on. I mean, this one thing about Alex Jones, whatever he says, a lot of shit. He says a lot of crazy shit, but this guy is able to predict shit, which is insane right that he knows all this stuff and uh during the tucker carlson interview he mentioned that it's not about predicting anything is that he's reading all the documents and he's like they're laying it out they're laying it out for us there it's right there everything that they're doing it's laid out already so i just go on there and i read the stuff i read the articles and that's how i'm able to put stuff together so i didn't know about that so i was like oh that's interesting maybe i should start reading more often uh, different shit right and 
we as come on let's be honest we don't go out and read all kinds of shit we we go in our in social media and we read and that's where we get our news right we don't go out and read articles or shit that's happening you know artificial intelligence and all these meetings that there are people that are having with the with the government we don't read any of that we don't we don't check those shows out so you know this guy does all that stuff you know and, and that's how he gathers his information and some of the stuff that he said before um it's like he he knew about it right he predicted it so it's, it's crazy just by the information that he was reading and information that he got and i'm sure he has different people in in the inside you know telling him stuff also i'm pretty sure of it uh but it was an interesting conversation. Uh, I like this Alex Jones better than the, I mean, the last one was funny whenever he goes on Joe Rogan and starts shouting out stuff like he, you know, it's, it's, it's hilarious, right? It's like, this guy's insane. But this one was, this Alex Jones was different. He was controlled and, uh, in a controlled environment with uh, Tucker Carlson. I'm sure, like I said, he was probably been talked to and it's like, Hey, you need to relax a little bit. Don't get too wild on the show. Don't, don't yell and scream. Uh, but it was different, right? It was a, it was a really good conversation. Uh, Tucker Carlson is bringing in a bunch of people that are, I mean, he's just bringing in some people that, you know, like that guy that came out that supposedly he was Obama's lover or something like that. I mean, holy shit. I mean, it was, where the hell are these, where are these people coming from? You know what I mean? It's just this Tucker Carlson guy. I mean, his stuff has like 425 million views, like for like some of the episodes. I mean, it is insane. It is insane the amount of views this man gets. It is crazy, right? And these people, like like I said, that Obama guy that supposedly he's this lover and all that, you're like, what? What the hell is going on here? Is this shit even true? You know, this is the problem. What is true and what is not? That is the problem is we're always going to live in a world like this where we are going to depend on finding out the truth from somebody else, right? And then somebody's going to bend the truth. And then somebody is going to only give you parts of the truth. And somebody is going to give you some bullshit lies. And somebody is going to give you a full lie. Somebody is going to give you partial lie with partial truth. What the hell is the damn truth? You know what I mean? Money and power and and status for these people, right? It's uh, it's It's insane to me. You know, and it's like, man... Like, is that even true that Obama had a lover and he was getting pounded by this guy? I mean, what the hell is going on here, man? You know what I mean? I don't know what the hell is going on. It, it's, there's just a lot of weird, crazy things, cover-ups, conspiracies, you know, chefs drowning, uh, you know, all this weird stuff. Some dude's house blew up this re just recently that supposedly there were part that were spies or something or they worked for the CIA or some weird shit. I don't know. I heard I also heard it on uh, Whiskey Hell podcast. Check out Whiskey Hell. These guys are amazing. Uh, they actually talked about it a little bit. So if you want to know a little bit more of the conspiracy, go to Whiskey Hell podcast and their 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 new episode is going to drop Monday. And if you are, so they have a Patreon and I'm going to do a little bit of uh, advertising here for, for whiskey hell. Uh, they, they don't pay me anything that none of that. They're just friends of the show. They're, uh, the, they're great people they they are those, these guys are really, really smart. And this is the way that, um, the news should be, the news should be right. Just straight up and honest. Uh, but McShane and Fitz and Hefe, you know, these guys are awesome. And these guys have a Patreon. Patreon, everybody knows, I'm sure. If you don't know, it's a service where uh, you can have your show, right? And, and you pay a subscription to listen to their show and stuff like that. It's for everything. There's for art and for different things, right? For, there's different Patreon. It's just Patreon and there's different artists, content creators on there. But if you have, if you join their Patreon, they have different levels, right? I think one's like $10, $7 or something. I can't remember what it is, but you pay for it and you get to listen to the show before it gets aired raw, live, uncensored, right? Before it even hits Monday morning. And this uh, Saturday, they usually do it on Saturdays. They talked about this guy that I'm sure a lot of people have seen in the news on that house. Where was it in, in Pennsylvania? I can't remember where the hell the, hell the house was at the, Virginia I don't know anyways but this house blew up right the the SWAT team went in there to 
do something and then to get this person in the house just blew up. And I guess there was a lot more than what they were saying in the news and whiskey hell decided to go really deep into this stuff. And I was listening to this stuff and I was like, what that, that dude had a, there were some kind of spy company and this and that. And I was like, what in the world? So if you just listen to the news or to some stuff on social media, you don't get all the truth, right? You get some bullshit. So you have to have people like Whiskey Hell where these guys go into depth about stuff and they they, they find the information and they uh, when they start talking about it, you're like, what the hell? What, what are the freaking chances of what, you know, that these guys are involved in some kind of government shit and all of a sudden shit's exploding? That is weird. That is weird. There's more into it. I'm not going to get into this topic because I don't know enough. So just check out Whiskey Hell Podcast. These guys have the best show, man. These guys, hands down, are the best show when it comes to news. And uh, they're amazing how they, how they put their content together. But, uh, yeah. And so you don't know, right? You don't know what the hell. You don't know what the hell. So it makes it hard for me for a podcaster like myself to talk about shit like this because you're like damn what the hell is true and what the hell is not and where is this uh where is tucker carlson getting all these people you know like what the hell is going on you know now alex jones is going to be reinstated on on x on twitter i hate saying x that's so stupid that is stupid why did you see this is what i'm struggling with it's so stupid. I guess when you're that rich, you can name it whatever the hell you want. But, man, you could have changed it up a little bit. You don't have to change. You don't have to reinvent the wheel, you know. It's like, yeah, I'm tweeting on X. Like, that is so stupid. That's so stupid. Twitter was fine. Twitter was fine. Twitter, fine. You could have named it Twitter X. Twitter X. Twitter X. That's what I would have named it. You want to put the damn X on everything, Put named it Twitter X, Right? Yeah, I'm tweeting here. I'm on Twitter X. You can still say tweet. You can still say, you know, all the regular shit. Instead of be like, yeah, I'm on Twitter. And it was like, no, you mean X? Like, ah, shut up. It's the same shit. To me, it's still Twitter. Like, it doesn't matter if you switch a stupid bird icon to an X. It's still Twitter. X is stupid. The the emblem is cool. I get it. Woohoo. The name is dumb. Name, you should name the Twitter X. Elon, I know you don't listen to my show, but if you ever listen to the show, this came out of this show first. The name is Twitter X. That's the name. That should have been the name of the platform. But anyway, speaking of platforms, uh, I'm not going to, I'm just randomly talking. I'm sorry, guys. But, you know, this threats platform, that's, that platform is just bullshit. You know what I mean? Um, I've been trying my best to keep up with threats, but it's not, there's no good. It's no information. It's shitty. Um, I did join it because, you know, I'm, I have a podcast and I was pissed off at Elon when he screwed us over and he, then I didn't have Twitter for like two days or X, but um, I was never going to live Twitter. I was never going to leave Twitter. Um, I was just talking shit. I love Twitter. Twitter is awesome. I had Twitter for a very long time. And uh, I was never this involved until I got my podcast. And I was like, holy shit, this place is cool. I mean, I I think the first time I downloaded Twitter was in 2012. And I was working in a place where this guy was constantly on his phone. And I'm like, what are you doing? Are you like on Facebook or something? Or he's like, no, nah, man, I'm on Twitter. And I'm like, what? Yeah, I'm talking shit to these dudes, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, what? And he was all about sports, right? So I'm like, you're talking shit about, what is it, a sports app? He's like, no, it's Twitter, man. It's everything, everything all around the world. I'm like, what? People, these people are talking shit about this new draft pick. And I was like, what? So I downloaded Twitter in 2012. So I've had Twitter since 2012. Obviously, my podcast, um, I had to create a different branch from it. And it says it's from 2021 or whatever, 2020, whatever it is. But I've had Twitter for a very long time on a different account. Uh, now, now they would call it a burner account, but I have two Twitters. Uh, the other one I don't use anymore. Please, I don't need any more shit. No more platforms. I'm really thinking of just closing my TikTok. I don't ever use it. Closing my threads. And I heard you can't close your threads because you have to close your Instagram. It's just stupid. Anyways, so 
I had Twitter for a long time, you know, and uh, I've never been so involved like I am now because of the show. And I'm like, holy shit, I missed out on a lot of stuff. This app is really cool. So that's all I use is I use Twitter for everything. I'm constantly on Twitter and I don't give a shit. You know what I mean? I don't really get, uh, I read a lot of stuff and I get so upset, but I don't, I don't engage a whole lot when it comes to fighting with people. I, I don't, I mainly post my stuff and here's my show or I repost my friend's stuff or my, uh, podcasting friend's stuff and that's it. Right. Or I repost interesting things on there, but I don't really get caught on into having a, a combative conversation with somebody. Um, it's not worth it to me because yes, if you have a combative conversation with me, I'm going to keep going and I just don't want to fall for the trap. So I do very little posting I post the show stuff, but I don't really get. And like I said, so I've I've commented on some stuff. And some people are are saying stupid things, and I'm like, dude, you don't even know what you're talking about. And uh, it happened to be that I'm an expert on the field of automotive, or you know, when it comes to tooling and all that. And this person was just saying nonsense, you know, and he had a million views. And I'm like, dude, that's not even what you call that. Like, if you don't know what the hell it's called, do some research. Don't don't be out there lying to people. Damn. Anyways. So he didn't respond back. Obviously, he knows I was right. Uh, this person, I can't even remember his name, some guy that I follow, and he follows me or whatever, but he's he's really big. He has a lot of followers, and uh, I just, you know, if I, if I know 100% that it's not right, I'm going to say something. I have to know 100% that I'm right, that, you know, what I'm saying is correct, not you know, making, I'm also making shit up and I sound like an idiot. So it's really hard to do, right? You can't, if you're on Twitter and you want to respond to something, you need to make sure that you know your shit, because if you don't know your shit, it's going to look really bad and everybody can see this shit. Everybody can see this shit. So I try not to get in that kinds of stuff uh, with Twitter, but I really enjoy Twitter. I love Twitter. It's great. It's a great app, uh, but threat sucks. I'm sorry. Um, honestly, uh, everything but Instagram sucks. Like, you know, Facebook sucks. I really hated Facebook. The only reason why I had a Facebook is because of family. Um, I still have a Facebook. I don't have the app. I never check it. I don't really care. I don't like Facebook. It's like MySpace. I don't really like MySpace. I never did. It's stupid. And uh, Instagram is okay. I like Instagram, but Instagram is really hard to get followers. It's really hard to communicate with people. Um, but Twitter is the way to do it, right? You can follow people, communicate with people. Uh, it's it's just way better, right? Just way better. But Elon, let's jump to a different thing here. Uh, Elon went ahead and told everybody to go fuck themselves. That was a great moment in time and history. Uh, and uh, because there is, you know, some people, some sponsors and companies pulling out of advertisement from Twitter slash X. Twitter X. I'm going to name it Twitter X. I named it Twitter X. Uh, pulling out of Twitter X and uh, you know he went on to this show and they asked him what do you think of these people that are these companies that are pulling out of advertisement or advertising stuff on your on X and this and that and he his words were they could you know go fuck yourselves so <laughs> that was wild um, that's a lot of profanity for one for one episode I'm sorry but that's what he said. Go fuck yourselves. And that was great. I mean, I, I felt it. You know what I mean? I felt it. And sometimes it feels good when you're right to go, go fuck yourself. You know what I mean? It feels good, right? It feels good. It's like a release of the body, of like the stress. You know, it just, you feel like you want to say it more often, you know, and I know Will is going to listen to this podcast. Will, I know that you feel this, my brother. I know that you just want to go to work one day and go, go fuck yourselves. Yeah. Will, you know, I'm right. Will, you know, you're going to listen to this show and I know big brother's going to send me a message saying, Joe, you're cussing too much on that show. I don't like what you're saying. And cause he's HR and I know that, you know, I'm going to get some shit from Big Brother. But, Will, you know, you know that I know and we know that that's what you feel like sometimes because that's how I feel sometimes. And when Elon said that in front of the whole world, I was like, holy shit, man. That's got to, I bet he felt 
freight saying that. I bet that he was waiting for this for a long time, right? The release, right? The release of all the tension of all the shit that's going on since he bought this app, right? And he bought it for a good reason. I, I think so. And if he wouldn't have bought it, this would have been good. Kept it would have just kept going for a long time. And all the shit that this guy was ever was was able to uncover from buying this app, all this government shit that was going on, lying to the people, lying to everybody, you know, elections and lies, and I mean, it was wild. All the real information for those people that still don't believe on that. This is real information, real shit. That was hidden from the public that Twitter and the government were working together with. And they were screwing us over. They were not letting us know the truth. It was just wild. It's just wild, right? The Twitter files. The Twitter files are wild. But this guy's been going on. He's made a lot of enemies since then. And uh, it must have felt great to just. And he didn't just tell the guy. The the, inter, the the guy that was on the interviewing him. He didn't look at him and tell him. He looked out into the crowd, into the cameras, and said, Go fuck yourselves. Like that must have felt great. I know I felt great. And God, I wish I could go to work sometimes and say that. You know, and I know some people at work are probably gonna listen to this. You know, but damn, sometimes you some people just deserve it. You know what I mean? Like, damn. Sometimes the pressure is too much where you have to release. And that's what I, I think Elon Musk did. And that was a, that was a hell of a thing to say, man. And, uh, you know, when you are that rich, it's okay. Right. If I would have, if I was to walk into work and go, good morning, go fuck yourselves. I would be fired. <laughs> I would be fired and it would take me a long time to get a job. And because what I do is, is, uh, the kind of job that I do, the, the the career that I have is specialized and it's not a whole lot of people that do this position, that do this job, that it would take me a long time to get to this position again. So if I went and did that, I would be really fired, like right away, right? Just for the hell of it. I just walked in there and said that. It would feel amazing, liberated, if I had money, right? If I had money, if I had money, I'd probably be walking around telling everybody to go fuck themselves. You know what I mean? Of course. Yeah. And and you can when you're Elon Musk. Because so what? Yeah, Twitter Twitter goes you know, goes upside down. It's okay. He's still a billionaire. Who gives a shit? Right? Who's gonna send who's gonna send the rockets up to the to space? The satellites? Nobody. You know what I mean? So they need him. And uh he's He's got people by the balls, right? He's got the government by the balls. They need him. He needs them. I think they need him more than he needs them. Uh, and because uh, he's in, he's just changing, changing the world, right? Elon is changing the world, so they need him. Uh, and I'm sure that felt really good. But I'm sorry, big brother, for the profanity on this episode. Um, like I said, I had podcasters block from the beginning, and it just turned out to be a really good episode. I think now I'm just constantly. I think I need to use that Elon thing a lot, a lot more often, but yeah, so I couldn't do that. So please. And I know Will wouldn't do that either, but it's what we feel inside, right? It's what we feel inside that sometimes it is necessary to say those words. Uh, it's not uh, always the right thing to do because you will lose your job or get your ass beat and you have to use it at the right time. You can't just, you can't just be crying wolf and then start saying this to people and you're the one doing it, right? You you can't. It doesn't apply that way. You have to. It has to apply when you had enough and people are being unfair. There's shit that is not right where you have to be able to use that. You're able to use that, right? Can't just, can't just be doing bad shit and go tell that to people because you look stupid. So anyways, that was crazy. That was, that was, that was crazy news, right? I, I watched that whole interview. It was, uh, when I was watching and he said that I was like, holy shit. You know what the hell and uh good for him good for him i think he does a lot of good things and he's gonna do a lot of good things and uh, i know that he's not perfect he's gonna make a lot of mistakes especially when it comes to artificial intelligence and all this stuff but uh, hopefully elon keeps keeps the course and 
and, and, and does something good for society, right? Um, obviously, he has to make money too, right? That's how he's able to come up with ideas. So uh, hopefully he makes the right decisions and uh, he can keep going. So, but yeah, that was wild. There was a lot of stuff going on in, in, in the news and there's a lot of things going on in this world that uh, it's so confusing, like this war. I'm not going to talk about it. I, I'm really not because I, this Israel and this and that, and I just, I, I, I don't know what to say. I just know that we shouldn't be having war. We shouldn't, but and that's in the perfect world and people are constantly going to be fighting for power and there's always going to be good, and bad guys and good guys. And I don't know. I don't know what to say about this war thing. I just know that it sucks and, you know, when there's innocent people being killed on both sides, it's, it's not good. Right. So I'm not in favor of war. Uh, I'm not, uh, gonna, I'm not going to speak for Israel, speak for the other people or Hamas or whatever the hell. I don't know. I don't, I really don't know shit, but the war part of it sucks. You know, it just sucks because it just gets us involved in this kinds of stuff. And we are already falling apart in this country. We definitely don't need to go into a war because it wouldn't be good. Right. We can't get our shit together. We got this President Biden. I don't know what the hell's going on. Apparently, to Alex Jones, he supposedly somebody told him, somebody inside the White House told him that he is delusional walking around the White House naked in the middle of the night. Like, what the hell? You imagine that this shit is real? Like, I want, I want, I want you all to close your eyes and imagine Joe Biden walking around the White House naked. And that they give him a bunch of drugs so he can function. Is this real? Is this real? Like, is this really true? We're, this world is jacked up. But you know what? Now, if I was a president, I'd be walking around the White House naked too. That's right. I'll do whatever I want. I'm the president of the United States. Walk around naked all I want. I don't give a shit. I mean, it's none of anybody's business what I do in the White House. It's my house. Walk around naked. Yeah. Walk around naked with a beer. Drinking a beer. Right? Have a nice gaming room in the White House so I can game naked. Just there. You know what I mean? Just just butt ass naked. You walk into the gaming room at the White House and be like, Mr. President, Laura, you're naked. Yes, I am. And I'm playing Call of Duty naked. I like it. I like it like that. And please don't put leather seats. I don't want to smell funny afterwards. Put some cloth seats on there with a towel. You know what I mean? I'm still, even though because I'm naked doesn't mean I'm disgusting. But I will be walking around naked too. I don't give a shit. I will be doing a lot of this shit that these people do these days. You know what I mean? It's like, why are you so worried about what I do if I walk around naked? What I'm, what I'm worried about is all the drugs that supposedly they're giving this guy so he can function. That's definitely not what we want in a president. We want a young person, at least somebody that's in a better shape, like RFK is in really good shape. He's an older guy, but he works out. Vivek is a young man, different generation, very motivated, right? Joe Biden is 80 years old or whatever the hell he is, and he can barely talk or walk. He's lost. He's like Glitch McConnell. Glitch McConnell doesn't even know what he's doing. He's glitching. He's like glitching stuck in the matrix somewhere. I don't know what the hell is going on. But uh, the White House thing, walking around naked, who gives a shit, right? Like, who gives a shit? Who cares? Who cares if the president smokes, right? Like, when Obama used to smoke, supposedly, who gives a shit if he smokes? Well, you can't smoke if you're a president. You can't walk around naked, you know? Well, Bill Clinton was getting blowjobs. You know what I mean? I mean, what's so bad about walking naked and smoking a cigarette? As long as you're not out there getting blowjobs by everybody else at the White House. You know what I mean? I mean, that's bad. But walking around naked, smoking a cigar, smoking cigarette while you're the president of the United States or, you know, it's all good. Is President Biden walking around naked because he doesn't know what he's doing? Then That's bad. The, the part where he doesn't know what he's doing, the old age is bad. But if he's just like, hey, I would like to walk around naked and there's nobody in the White House, just Secret Service. Just don't look at me while I walk by. That's weird. Don't look at me. Don't look down there. Look in my eyes because I'm naked then it's okay. I'll walk around naked too. That's what I would do. I can't do it here at home, right? Because that'd be weird walking around naked. Kids would be like, what the hell are you doing, dad? Yeah, don't, don't, don't do that. But if I didn't have any kids and I was in the White House and I felt like going and getting a glass of milk, I would walk naked and get that glass of milk. 
I don't care. That's what I would do. Anyways. This went on for 33 minutes of random nonsense that I wanted to talk about. And like I said, I've been having issues with trying to come up with stuff to talk about. Uh, the things that I want to talk about takes a long time to get together. And for me, to, I need to know a little bit more about what the hell I'm, gonna, I'm about to say. Right. But stuff like this where it's just random stuff is where I'm good at. It's where I, I'm actually really good at is coming up with bullshit. And, um, you know, if I had to make a podcast about coming up with bullshit, my podcast would probably be the best. I'm telling you. But I don't want to come out with bullshit. I want to be able to entertain you and at least learn something new, right? And hopefully you learned something new from the show today. Like maybe you didn't know that Alex Jones said that somebody told him the president was walking naked. Maybe you didn't get to see where Elon said, go fuck yourselves. You know, maybe. Maybe that in, in, inspires you. Maybe that uh, makes you go watch that interview. Uh, maybe you didn't know about the dude that the house that blew up. Maybe you heard it in the news, but maybe you thought it was just some guy, some criminal they were after. Maybe there's more to it, right? That's why you need to go to Whiskey Hell podcast and listen to their stuff. So there's a lot of shit. There's a lot of shit going on. Holidays, is, they're tough. Uh, it's a lot of stuff going on, right? There's um, uh, lots of traffic. You need, please be safe out there. I witnessed almost a tragedy this uh, this Friday, and it's horrible, right? There's a guy on a motorcycle, uh, and I've I rode a motorcycle for a very long time. I sold my last motorcycle about five, six years ago. Not because I was scared, just because it was just there, and I didn't get enough time to ride it. But I was right behind a motorcycle, and, and I... I always make sure that I give the, the motorcyclist cushion, right? I am about four car lengths behind them because I hated when I drove a motorcycle that people were on my ass. I hated that shit. I hated when people would try to go around me and pass me. It's like, dude, just because I have a motorcycle doesn't mean that I have to drive 100 miles an hour and pop a willy to, to please you. Do not go around more people with motorcycles, people. Have some respect. Don't go around them, please. Don't ride their ass because they have nothing protecting them. If they, if somebody in front of them stomps on their brakes, he has no chance. You're going to sandwich this person right in, right, right in between and you're just going to crush them because you're not going to have enough chance to stop. Don't ride, don't ride their asses, please. Back off motorcyclist. So anyways, I was right behind this motorcycle. I was going home. It's really late. It's dark. There's no lights out there. It's a, it's a two-lane road, right? One going one way, one going the other way. And uh, I'm right behind this person. And I always keep my distance, right? And I'm like, I'm, I'm about four car lengths behind him. There's a bunch of people behind me, tons of people. It's the time to go home, right? There's only that road to go to this, to go to this community. So there's tons of people. I can see the lights. And uh, we're we're almost to the part where there's some railroad tracks. The guys, the guys, you know, driving his motorcycle, riding his motorcycle, and somehow he hits something in the railroad tracks. I don't know if his muffler or his bike was too low. Something I don't know what happened. Sparks show up. The guy loses his balance and falls over to the right. So I stop. Right, I come up to a stop, and I'm trying to get out, but there's tons of traffic. So if the guy would have fallen over to the left. The guy would have gotten ran over. They would have ran his head over. So I got out of the truck finally. I went over, ran over there. I'm like, you okay? He's like, yeah, the bike is crushing my leg. I can't get out. But I couldn't get the damn bike off this guy. And uh, another good Samaritan stopped. And uh, he pulled over. He ran over here, ran over there, and, and helped me pull the bike off this young man. He was about, in his, I would say, in his 20s, maybe younger. Uh, he was wearing a helmet. Wearing a jacket and gloves, good for him. That's what you should do. Don't try to be a freaking badass. You're not renegade. You are not renegade. You're not Lorenzo Lamas. You're not going to freaking go on a Harley with your blonde hair. You look dumb. You look dumb. If somebody hits you, you're dead. You are dead. Dead. Wear a freaking helmet. You don't look tough. You don't look tough with your leather jacket and, and, you know, your hair in the air. You think you're tough. You're going to die. Fuck. You're going to die. If somebody hits you, you're going to die. 
You don't look tough not wearing a helmet. Wear the freaking helmet. Don't wear flip-flops. Don't wear shorts riding a motorcycle. Don't be ridiculous. Don't be ridiculous. If you fall, you're going, the concrete, the asphalt is like sandpaper. It will sand down your skin to your bone. Trust me. Trust me. Don't be dumb. Don't be dumb. Wearing flip-flops, riding a motorcycle, it will rip your foot off. It will rip your foot off. Don't be dumb. Wear the helmet. You're not renegade. You're not cool. Wear the helmet. Be safe. You are going to die if somebody hits you. I've watched people die on a motorcycle in person, live, where I had to run to the store because I didn't have a cell phone at the time and call 911 because this person got hit and is dead. I seen another person get hit dead with blood coming out of his eyes, dead on Thanksgiving. And he was wearing a helmet. So just imagine if the guy wasn't wearing a helmet. Right? So it's just wild. Wear the damn helmet. You know, wear some damn shoes, some boots. Don't. Don't try to be a badass, please. And have some respect for people with motorcycles, folks. Please have some respect for people on a motorcycle. Please. Anyways, so we were lifting the bike off this guy. And people were trying to go around my truck, around us, on a two-lane road, right? We're, we're going west. We're going east. And people are going west. And people are honking. They're trying to go around us. And we're like, what the hell is wrong with people? This dude just fell off his motorcycle. He is lucky to be alive because if he would have fallen to the left side, he would have got incoming traffic and he would have been decapitated. I understand that it's Christmas. I understand that Christmas is coming up and it's the holiday season and everybody's in a damn rush, but we need to stop. Not only just for motorcycles, but for people out there. Pay attention. Don't ride anybody's ass when you're behind them. You can't be in that much of a hurry. If you're late, you're late. You know what I mean? If you're driving a motorcycle, wear your damn gear. Wear your gear, please. If you're going to spend money, buy a freaking helmet. At least if you don't have a whole lot of money, buy a $25 helmet from Amazon. I don't give a shit. But at least have something in your head. If, if you have plenty of money, buy a nice, nice helmet. When I was riding my motorcycle, I made sure I bought the best helmet I could I could purchase. I went and bought a six hundred dollar helmet that was proven that you could go through a brick wall and at least have your brain intact. You wouldn't be able to do shit afterwards, but I'd still be alive. And maybe on a smaller collision, I would be able to survive it. Right? Wear your freaking helmet, like you know, these people think they're tough, man, with their motorcycles and all kinds of stuff. It's like, dude, I don't. I like to see, like when you wear when you're driving your Harley or your Crotch Rocket, right? Your sports bike, and you're wearing a helmet, you're wearing your gear, man. That looks cool, man. Like that means that you care about your life, right? And you look cool. But when you're riding around on your Harley or whatever the hell you're riding on these big, huge, freaking bikes, and you think you're tough, you have no jacket on, you have no 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 nothing, no helmet, you're on flip flops. Like that is ridiculous. That is ridiculous. It's not worth it. 42 minutes in, man. Anyways, so I witnessed that this this last Friday, and it was, uh, man, that was scary, man. That was scary. And I obviously, you know, I, I ran over there to help him right away, right? And uh, he was shaking. He was scared. You can you can hear his voice. Uh, I asked him if he was okay. We asked him, you're okay? He's like, you're all right? Yeah, and he lived in the same neighborhood as I do, right? Uh, same community, not neighborhood, but same community. Because communities are really big out here. And uh, he was probably going home or visiting somebody or I don't know, right? But um, at least he made it home, right? At least he made it home. But you need to be careful, right? Because if I would have been going, if I would have been right up his ass, right? Hauling ass, trying to get home. I'm in a hurry. It's late. I want to get home. And I had shit to do. But, I, you know, I, I had shit to do too. I'm busy. But if I would have done that and this guy falls over, I wouldn't have had, I wouldn't have had enough time to stop. I would have ran him over. And I would have killed this guy before Christmas. Please be safe. 
Pay attention out there. Till next time. Peace.